Welcome back to English 4.0, the radio show. Let's go! Advanced. Oh, hello. Hello and welcome. Welcome, advanced students. Here we are in class 32. And we're going to start with a little review of what we saw yesterday. Well, back in class 31, it might be yesterday, or maybe you listened to it uh, a few days ago, or maybe you listened to the podcast just a few minutes ago. I don't know. But welcome back, nonetheless, to class 32. Here we are. So we're going to practice with not even. Uh, for example, I don't know when you listened to the last class. Nobody knows when you listened to the last class, not even me. Well, only you do. You know. But um, now nobody knows. Except for me, nobody knows what I had for lunch. Not even you. Not even my mother, because she wasn't there. No one could remember the answer. The teacher couldn't remember either. Not even the teacher could remember the answer, right? Ni siquiera. Not even. Not even the teacher could remember. Okay, so we're going to continue with this structure. I'm going to give you some, some little, little clues and cues, and I'd like you to give me the appropriate response using not even, okay? No one corrected his mistake. The teacher didn't either. So you can say, no one corrected his mistake. Not even the teacher. Ooh, not a very good teacher if he didn't correct his mistake. No one came to the party. The host didn't come either. Incredible, the host. It was his party. He didn't even come. No one came to the party. Not even the host. No one drove. The bus driver didn't drive either. No one drove. Not even the bus driver. Hmm, incredible. No one could eat the whole hamburger. My brother couldn't eat it either. No one could eat the whole hamburger. Not even Kyle's brother. That's amazing because my brother can eat a lot of food. I have seen him sit there and eat. It's funny, when I go home for Christmas to Canada, my brother, my brother and I both go home for Christmas. We're, my brother lives in Malaysia, and I live in, well, obviously in Madrid. And um, we'll have these massive, well, these, well, we, we'll, we'll have big din we have big dinners. And uh, because my mother is an excellent cook. And I'll eat everything. We'll be everyone will be will be finished except my brother, who will be about halfway through, and he will finish. He he eats enough for about three or four people, but he's skinny. He's very thin, but he eats and eats and eats. He's like a, an eating machine. I've never met anyone like him. It's incredible. No one could eat the whole hamburger. Not even my brother. Incredible. Nothing worked properly. The demonstration didn't even work properly. Not even the demonstration worked properly. No one listened to his speech. The boss didn't listen either. No one listened to his speech. Not even the boss. Hmm. I can't understand what he's saying. I can't understand a single word. I can't understand what he's saying. I can't even. I can't even understand a single word. Ni siquiera. Una palabra. I can't even understand a word that he's saying. Can you please slow down? I can't understand a word. I can't make out. To, to decipher, we say to make out a word. I can't make out what you're saying. If, the, if, if, if I'm reading a paper, and I put the paper far from my eyes, and the writing is small, I will say, I can't make out the writing. I can't make it out. I can't decipher it. But we can say that with sounds as well. Can you make out what, I, what I'm saying if I speak in a strange accent? If I talk like this, can you make out what I'm saying? If I talk with this accent, y'all understand what I'm saying? Could, now, could you make out what I was saying? Because I was speaking with a strange accent. Could you make out what I was saying? Let me try it again. I'm going to say something, and then I'm going to see if you can make out what I'm saying. I went down to market, and I bought three cows for the farm. Now, did you make out what I said? Could you make out what I just said? Did you make it out? I said, I went down to the market, and I bought three cows for the farm. <laughs> but I said it in a strange accent, right? Did you make it out? Did you decipher what I was saying? I think you did. Good job. 
Good job. Let's move on here. So we were talking about this idea of not even. But uh, moving on now to asking questions. I said in the last class, I said that we always ask questions. Preguntamos preguntas. In English, preguntamos preguntas. Nunca hacemos preguntas. We, we ask, well, we, in Spanish you say that, hacer preguntas. But in English, preguntamos, we ask questions. Have I asked you a lot of questions so far today? Yes, you've asked me a lot of questions so far today. Have I asked you over 30 questions? Yes, you've asked me over 30 questions. Ask, 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 ask. So there are several reasons why we can practice this, why we should practice this. We should practice it because, to, well, grammatically, we should practice it so, with it so that we get in the habit of saying to ask a question. But also we practice it so that we can know the, the proper pronunciation of the word ask, ask, k, ask. It's like, que asco, que asco, ask, k, k, ask. Yesterday I asked over 500 questions. It's true. Ask me how many questions I've asked so far today. Kyle, how many questions have you asked so far today? Well, I've asked over 300 questions. I asked over 500 questions yesterday. And I have asked over 300 questions so far today. Mm -hmm. Have I ever asked you a ridiculous question? Yes, Kyle, you've asked me a ridiculous question. You've asked me several ridiculous questions. I ask all kinds of questions. I enjoy asking questions, and I think it's important to ask questions and to answer questions. Ask, ask, ask. Today I ask, yesterday I asked, lately I have asked. So ask me how many questions I'm going to ask tomorrow. Kyle, how many questions are you going to ask tomorrow? Excuse me, what do you want to know? I want to know how many questions you're going to ask tomorrow. Oh, I'm going to ask, I don't know, probably 200 questions tomorrow. I'm going to ask 200 questions tomorrow. That's right. Because I ask a lot of questions. I love asking questions. It's important. <laughs> Expression of the day. Oh, boy. It's time for... Yes. Are you paying attention? Because it's time for the expression of the day. Our expression of the day today. Bad blood. Mala sangre. I don't know if you say this in Spanish or not, but in English we say, there is bad blood between two people or two teams. We very often use it in sports. Bad blood. Mala sangre. Bad blood. Now, there's, there's some bad blood. It, me it means there's a rivalry. There's an intense rivalry and competition. And uh, maybe it's serious. Maybe people actually hate each other. Or maybe it's just a competitive spirit. But if there's an intense rivalry, we can say there is bad blood between the two people or the, the, or the teams, for example. I think there's bad blood between Real Madrid and Barcelona. There's bad blood. Now, my favorite hockey team, because I, I don't really know much about football. I'm from Canada. It's, I, I, I watch and I follow hockey. Ice hockey. Hockey sobre hielo. Ice hockey. But we, don't, we never say ice hockey in Canada. We always say hockey. For us, it's, for us, it's just hockey. It'd be like me saying football, like football on grass? Well, of course. Where, where else would you play it? it? True. I mean, in some countries, they play it on, they play hockey on a field. But for me, hockey is on ice for me. And my favorite team is the Montreal Canadiens. They are a very successful team, the most successful team in, in the history of hockey. They have won their, the championship more than any other team. They're like the Real Madrid of hockey. Well, in a way, they're like the New York Yankees of hockey. They've won more championships than any other team in the league. And they have an intense rivalry with Boston. The team in Boston, they're called the Boston Bruins. And there is some bad blood. There is some bad blood. There are a lot of fights. Between those teams, whenever they meet, there's there are fights. There, there's a strong rivalry between those teams because there's bad blood. There's a lot of bad blood between those teams, yes. Bad blood. And that is our expression of the day, folks. Did you get it? Bad blood. Now, pronunciation-wise, 
pronunciation wise. I can say in terms of in términos de pronunciación. For example, like and now when I when I say that, I can say pronunciation wise in terms of. So how are we doing? How are we doing time wise? In términos de tiempo. In terms of time, time wise. How are we doing pronunciation wise? Pronunciation wise, one word. Pronunciation wise, we're. Uh, it's interesting because we have a, two words that end in a D. And I have a fascination with words that end in D because it bothers me when people say, I live in Madrid. Madrid? What? I've never even heard of that city. Ma Madrid. No, Madrid. D Madrid. Madrid. You need to seal that sound and pronounce that D the way it... Give it the pronunciation that it deserves. Bad blood. There's bad blood in Madrid. Bad blood, okay? Pronounce those Ds, please. Repeat after me. Did David do it or did you? Did David do it or did you? So the D, the D is very important. At the end of the word, make sure you pronounce that and your tongue stays in your mouth, touching the roof of your mouth behind your teeth. The tongue does not touch your teeth. If your tongue touches your teeth when you say the word bad or Madrid, then you're pronouncing it Spanish style. If you're a native English speaker, your tongue will not touch your teeth on the pronunciation of the word D. Think about that and practice it. Repeat, and if you, if you can't do it, practice it over and over and over again until you get it right, okay? Let's go. Let's move on. Let's study. Let's practice. Let's move on. Let's try something new. Let's, 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 let's. Empezamos. Let's go. I said at the start of the show, let's go, right? Did you hear that? And there are many people that confuse let's and shall. Shall we go? When I say, shall we go, then I'm proposing, would, it's like saying, would you like to go? But let's go is, is like, it's more... Um, it's more certain. I'm, I'm saying, vamos, come on, let's go. Bailemos, let's dance. Bailamos, question mark, shall we dance? Shall we? It's like saying, would you like to? But if I say, bailamos, come on, let's dance. I'm not asking you, I'm telling you. Vamos, let's dance, let's go, let's dance. Empecemos, let's start. Empezamos? Shall we start? Okay, do you understand the difference here? Between let's and shall, okay? So, I want us to go. Let's go. I want us to finish. Let's finish. I'm tired. Let's finish. I want us to make dinner. Let's make dinner. I want us to drive there. Let's drive there. I want us to call some friends. Let's call some friends. Come on, it's the weekend. Let's call some friends. I want us to work on it. Let's work on it. I don't want us to waste time. Let's not waste time. Let's use our time wisely. I don't want us to be late. Let's not be late. I don't want us to be lazy. Let's not be lazy. I want us to have some sandwiches. Let's have some sandwiches. I want us to take a break. Let's take a break. I want us to keep practicing. Let's keep practicing. Okay? I'm not saying shall we. It's not a question. It's a, you know, it's an affirmative structure what I'm telling you. I mean, I'm not I'm not being mean about it. I would say bailamos. I'm not, I'm not being mean. I'm just saying, "Come on." Right? Let's do it. Vamos. Let's vamos. Bailamos. Let's go. All right. Let's dance. Let's study. Let's work. Let's do it. I think we should keep practicing. Venga. Let's go. Let's keep practicing. I think we should have some fun. Let's have some fun. I think we should. I, I don't. I don't want us to make a mistake. Let's not make a mistake. Let's be careful. Let's not make a mistake here. I, want, I don't want us to finish before the job is done. Let's not finish before the job is done. Let's keep going. Let's keep working until the job is done, okay? I think we should move on. Let's move on. Eso es. Vamos. Let's move on. 
vocabulary of the day. Ooh, okay, it is time now for our vocabulary. Vocabulary of the day. Our five words of vocabulary. The first word today is ampolla. Ampolla. Aquí en mi dedo tengo una ampolla que... Uy, que me, me, me molesta. Mm. Ah. A blister. I have a blister. I have a blister on my finger. Yeah, there's some... Uh, I guess there's some blood inside. A blister. Blister. ¿Cómo se dice gancho? Anzuelo. Garfio. Hook. Hook. Yeah, hook. Like Captain Hook. Hook. K -k with that K. Hook. Lamentable. Regretful. Regretful. Azafran. Yes, you can cook with this. Azafran. Saffron. 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 Mm. Escudo. Shield. Shield. Sh como como sh silencio. Sh sh shield. Shield. All right. Very good. Let's move on and talk about... Let's go. Okay. Again, let's go. Let's talk about... Um, to get rid of. Deshacerse de algo. I have some old things I have to get rid of. I'm not good at getting rid of old things. I will admit, I am not good at getting rid of old things. No me gusta. I don't like getting rid of old things. No me gusta deshacerme de, de cosas viejas. Old things. I don't like getting rid of them. Because I am a pack rat. There we go. A little extra expression today. Pack, P-A-C-K, because to, to, to pack, to pack a bag, is to fill your bag with things, so pack, 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 pack. So a pack rat is one of those, is, is a rat that has a nest where it keeps all sorts of little things that it finds, pieces of string, cloth, m different materials, food. So imagine inside the wall, there's a hole and there's a rat and he brings all kinds of strings and little soft things and makes a nest. He keeps all sorts of things. So this has become an expression. A pack rat is someone who keeps everything. And I'm a pack rat. I keep things. I don't like to get rid of things. No me gusta deshacerme de muchas cosas. I don't like to get rid of many things. Deshacerme? I think I, think I, I should say deshacer. I don't, I don't like to get rid of many things. Because I'm a pack rat. I keep things. Mm-hmm. My car is terrible. What should I do? Kyle, you should get rid of it because it's terrible. You should get rid of it. My watch doesn't work well. Well, Kyle, you should get rid of your watch and get a new one. My shirts are too small. You should get rid of them. Get rid of your shirts, Kyle, if they're too small. Get rid of them and get some new ones. My pen is leaking. It's leaking. Está saliendo you know, la, la, la tinta. The ink is coming out. It's leaking. Get rid of it. Don't keep an, an old leaky pen. Get rid of it. My computer doesn't work. Get rid of it. If it doesn't work, get rid of it and get a new one. We're out of time, folks. We're completely out of time, so I'm going to have to finish. But thank you so much for listening. We will be back tomorrow with more. Tune in again. Another expression. More, more, more. More is better when it comes to exposing yourself to the English language, so we will be back my name is Kyle. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.